understand what are we called to do, you know? It's, it's like football team has to go to a huddle and realize, you know, what's the next play? <laughs> what's the next play? What, what are we supposed to do? And, and if you've been studying and if you've been showing up for practice, when the play is called, you'll say, got it. <laughs> and you go to the line because if you don't know the play, you're going to be, got it, I think. And you're looking around, what am I supposed to do again? And God wants us to be a taught people where we truly understand, where we truly understand what he's doing and what his expectations are of us. Hallelujah. So um, we're going to definitely get just a little bit of encouragement on tonight and then we'll receive an offering if the Lord allows. Praise the Lord. But. I want us, if you have your Bible, if you have your mobile device that has your app on it, won't you turn to 3rd John real quick? Thank you, Lord Jesus. 3rd John. And we're going to just go to verse, I'm just going to read verse 3 through 6, or we shall read 3 through 6. Praise the Lord. Yes, God. Praise the Lord. Brother Curtis, if you could, man, could you go ahead and read verse 3? Read it, read it out loud, man. For well, I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testify of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. Hallelujah. Brother Jazz, if you could, could you read verse 4, man? I have a greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. That sounds so good. Just that verse right there. Verse number five, Sister Judea, could you read verse five, baby? Praise the Lord. And minister, could you read verse number six? Uh, if we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not pray. No, third John. Third John, one and six. Hallelujah. Sister Faith, you have it? Yes. Could you read that? One verse six. Yes, ma'am. They have testified to your love before the church. You will do well to send them on in a manner worthy of God. Hallelujah. 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 For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, even as you walk in truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever you do to the brethren and to strangers which have borne witness of thy charity before the church whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well. I just want to talk just a little bit, y'all, and it's amazing that we actually have to talk about this type of stuff. Just on the love walk. Mm. Just on the love walk. Unfortunately, y'all, if we look around, believe it or not, the word love is considered weak nowadays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Most times, our rationale, this is, this is what's crazy. Most times our rationale is to re receive love. Like we want to receive it without having to walk in love. Isn't that amazing? You can talk to the average husband and ask him if he wants his, life to, his wife to love him unconditionally without infidelity. And most husbands will say, of course. And yet there are many people who not only they want one thing, but they're not even willing to give off what they expect to receive. The greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the greatest commandment, which is even equal to the first, is to love your neighbor as yourself. And the scriptures actually say the correct interpretation. Some people say love them how give what you expect to get, but that's not 
accurate, what it's really saying is love them with the same love that God loves you. That's the different ball game. So, so, so this is why he said, I, gracefully, I, I greatly rejoiced when the brethren came and testified. Think about that. You got people coming to the Apostle John saying, man, they got it. Like they actually got it. They're actually walking in love. They're actually, they're actually fulfilling an assignment. Amen. The brothers that's getting married, man, they're not even looking at no other women, man. The, the guys who on their job, man, you can tell that they're working with a, a different vigor because they, they actually understand that it's not what they're doing to man, but it's what they're doing as unto the Lord. They got it. Can you imagine what would happen if the people who really love God, if we begin to hear testimonies of those who actually walk in the faith and we can hear that they're actually doing exactly what the scripture. John says, I'm rich. Oh, he said, I'm getting excited because the very thing that we preach is what they're doing. Because y'all know a lot of people are talking a lot of stuff, but not actually living it. Because unfortunately, it's not even popular. It's popular to have more head knowledge than to actually have, you know, fruit that we're producing. It's amazing. I can remember when I was young, I thought about this when I was thinking about the love walk. I remember there was this cartoon we used to look at when we were young and it was called Fat Albert. <laughs> Fat Albert, y'all remember Fat Albert? <laughs> I still think of the little music. Dun, ka -dun, dun, ka -dun. And... <laughs> And, and what, was, what was ironic about all of them, they all had their own little walk. <laughs> and, and it really was a good cartoon because it was always about teaching lessons. And there was a guy that had a hat pulled all the way down over his face with just the eyes cut out. And, and, and I think it was great because it showed diversity, it showed the the potential of having weakness, the potential of being afraid and, and, and not being accepted, and yet all of them had their, their little place. And if we had to talk, I mean, that's the thing that came to my mind, the way each one of them walked. John says, I got testimony of what your walk looks like. See, with Fat Albert, we was thinking about the little animated walk. How they, you know, I mean, they just had a bunch of silly walks. But John said, I got word of the fruit of your walk. How you were, not only just with the church, but even among strangers. Glory to God. So because everyone had a particular walk, I want to just ask you, I mean, because every now and then, you know, we may be in the house dancing and stuff and acting crazy with my family. And sometimes my kids will tell me I'm known for rubbing my hands on my thighs. And, and, and they can mock certain things that I do. But if someone had to mock you, what would they mock? If someone had to say it was something about you that, you know, when they think about jazz, what comes to mind, you know? When they think about Kate, what comes to mind? When they think about Jackie, <laughs> you know, what comes to mind? You know, we have to understand that regardless if we think we're being recorded or not, there's certain attributes that we're carrying that people are getting wind of. And if someone mocked your walk, how would you demonstrate it? The scripture says in verse number five, beloved, you do faithfully whatsoever you do to the brethren and to strangers. This is powerful to me because there's so many people that think that they have a right to only love those who look like it's obvious they're walking in the faith and that's not true. Jesus said, I came to seek and to save those who are lost. So that means that each one of us could possibly and have been considered like a car that needed a jump. Still works. Still runs good. 
But every now and then, wait a minute, this thing is not turning over. Who could you connect to that if they really connected with you, they start functioning properly again? They got some people that's getting caught up in lust. You know why? The battery's dead. They got some people that's getting caught up with pride and selfishness and envy. And, and it's not that it's a junk car. You know, a lot of times we look at it and say, it's a lemon, get rid of it. It's a bad apple. No, sometimes it just needs a jump. Sometimes, I, I, I can tell you this honestly, that I've been in connection with people where we had conversations and the conversation was going one way, but once you show them that your conversation is going to be of this sort, have y'all ever seen people change their conversation after they heard what was coming out of your mouth? Sometimes it's because of a jump. Sometimes they realize, oh, that's what I was supposed to say. That's what I was supposed to do. That's, that's what I actually meant to say. And verse number six says, which have borne witness of your charity. Man, we don't talk about this enough. Your charity before the church. Y'all, most people would read this and think charity before the church. They think that means, oh Lord, I got to go to the church house. And I got to go pick up some paper. I got to go through. But no, when, it's, when he says your charity before the church, it's talking about the body of Christ. Like the things that you're doing that's actually igniting someone. They were once dead. But because, yo, I, I need y'all to really understand this. You literally have power. I think even science can certify that our bodies are just like machines. And there's actually positive and negative charges and different things like that. And we're alive just like something that's, and, and, and because we have power, God expects us, notice he says, you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. There's certain things that will happen that's at contact. Everybody say at con con contact. When you make contact with the right time at the right season, someone can either, if it's a positive contact, it will cause life to come forward. But it's amazing to think that if you make contact with something dark, you can find yourself having some negative thoughts, producing negative fruit, and you'll be able to trace it back to that contact or that connection. He says they have borne witness of the charity before the church. This is the condition of God, whom if you bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, you shall do well. When he says, if you bring someone after a godly sort, just because you're sharing with someone doesn't automatically mean that you're producing fruit. What's got to happen is when you grow to, I mean, yo, it, it's got to take the Holy Spirit to cause us to keep going, to be able to be rejected and keep going, to be able to be shunned and keep going, to be able to look at, be looked at as if you're not popular and you're able to keep going. He says in the midst of you being able to keep going, it's almost as if talking to a group of people and you're, you're not knowing if you bore any fruit and as you turn away to walk away, you got maybe one out of a whole group that chooses to follow you. This is what he's talking about, that you will be able to endure long enough to keep your own saved soul saved first, but then also be able to save someone else. And when we do that, it's not about saying, oh, my pride, you know, is because of the way I pray. No, these people are already equipped. They already have the spirit of the living God on the inside of them. So it's about being activated. It's about being reconnected. It's about being restored. So as we close, y'all, how was your love walk? Hallelujah. 
Let us just ponder that for a moment. What does a love walk even look like to you? We talked about Fatty Albert and how animated their walks, but what does a love walk actually look like to you? I met a young guy, and this is a true story. I met a young guy and he was telling me that he was on a trip and he was came to Houston and he was only gonna be here a couple of days. He lives here, but he was getting ready to go to Vegas and go and have a great time. And then he came out and mentioned to me that it was his son's birthday. And, and I was like, are you gonna be with your son? He said, no, I'm going to Vegas, but we're going to have a good time. We're going to hang out, you know, blase, blase, just talking. And I said, um, I said, why are you not gonna be with your son, man? And he said, he said, because me and the BM don't get along too well. And I said, but what does that have to do with your son? And he said, because man, she's on something else. She thinks that if I come around to do something for my son, he says, she has a daughter that's not mine. And he said, it's crazy because she expects me, whatever I do for my son, to do for her daughter, but that's not my daughter, you know? And, and it's like she's expecting too much from me and all I want to do is give to my son. And he said, man, she's just on something else. I said, man, I said, you don't get it, do you? I said, it's not that she's tripping because if you're not wanting to do something for her daughter, I said, she's tripping. I said, because number one, she's even angry with herself. I said, number two, most women, if a woman has a child for someone, I said, she was probably thinking that if she already had a daughter, that meant that she was looking at you as you could have been a good potential father for the daughter she already had. I said, you're not getting it, man. I said, so that means that now she's dealing with the pain of making another bad decision. And I said, here it is. You're talking about going to Vegas. I said, you're talking about having a grand old time. I said, not realizing that your BM <laughs> may not be afforded to do the very same thing that you're doing right now. And he said, I never looked at it like that. I said, don't you know that if you had a child with this woman, I said, God is expecting you to learn some things. I said, as a matter of fact, I said, who demonstrated love to you? I said, um, I said, what did you see from your mom and dad? And he said, I was raised by my grandmother. I said, see what happens is, it's very difficult to produce something that you may not have seen. And I said, now, I said, I don't even know you. I said, but it sounds like you're successful, you're making money, he works, you know, at like Top Golf, and he's over some different things, but he travels all these different cities. And I said, what happens is, I say, you're basically distracting yourself by your success because you're still covering some pain, man. I said, every child without their father, when they were young, there was a time that you talked about what you needed. I said, but now you got to a place where it's like, You'll say, I didn't even need my father. I said, but you really did. I said, because now you're producing for your son what was done for you. Yo, this thing is serious when we talk about a love walk. So now I didn't even know him. He just looked at me and said, man, what do you do? I said, I'm a teacher. I said, I'm a pastor. He just came out and said, you do so much more than just being a Lyft driver. He said, you're good at what you do. He said, because I'm thinking right now in ways that I never thought before. Yo, we're supposed to be literally walking around like a power surge to help someone come to a place where they get an understanding of something that they didn't have before. Yo, let's not be easily persuaded or easily influenced just because they still smiling. Yo, this guy, you know, he's got a nice car, you know, he's living a nice life, and people are broken, y'all. Yeah, exactly. So we have to be reminded, what is a love walk? 
A love walk is not being able to say, I'm trying to demonstrate love by showing how many babies you can make. Hallelujah. But sons of God, we plant seeds and we stick around to see that the seed is going to grow. We stick around to make sure that the seed is growing after a godly manner. People are into gardening. They put stakes in the ground around a little plant to make sure it grows correctly. That's what parents are supposed to be with their children. And when they get strengthened enough, you can take the little, the trainers off. And now they're established. They're established. Y'all just stand up together. Father, we just pray right now, Lord.